And our first presenter is uh, Håkon Norhagen. He's a material guy. He has a PhD in fracture mechanics from uh, the University of Trondheim and has worked in Sinta for 15 years with materials and uh, infrastructure. Please, Håkon, come up here. Give, give him a big applause. Uh, materials and uh, structures and things like that. Uh, uh, I'm, I was kind of curious before you talk about windmills and areas and how did you end up uh, in the ocean business with uh, this background? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, Thank you. Thank how you. do you end up in, in, an, in an area which is so complicated? I mean, you, you are in the middle of many industries, many interests, many topics, many sciences. So I tend to end up in these areas which uh, demands uh, uh, interaction between many disciplines. You like to, like the blind souls? Yeah, kind of, kind of, but still important. The floor is yours, Hoko. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I, will, I will talk about Norway's offshore wind ambitions and its use of area. Uh, this is the first time I talk about this in English, so some of the terms I hope uh, I can do also the English version of it. Uh, uh, so. What I'm going to talk about is Norway's offshore wind ambitions and what will the air use be with these ambitions. And, and, and this work has is, is, um, been going on for the last year, um, more or less set in, in forward by Offshore Norway, we tweeted here, in their, in their, in their program to, to create a good atmosphere or a good uh, working place or, or the coexistence of, of the fisheries and the, the offshore wind development. So I will give some, a summary of, of this work here. Um, of course, renewable energy is, is or, or energy in general, clean energy without emissions is, is uh, paramount to solve all this mess we are in right now. We need to get all the fuels off the fossil fuels. And to do that, one way is through electricity and, and whether that will be produced by wind or nuclear or hydro or we don't know, but at least the government in Norway has set a goal and I'll talk about that goal here. So there are two quantities that I will talk about. There will be some numbers here, uh, but I will, I will try to make you remember these two numbers. The first one is an effect for those who have had some physics. GV is gigawatts, so that's an effect. I'll talk about that. And, and the next one is an effect per area. So it's an effect over an area. Uh, so what is this 30 gigawatts? There has been some confusion, and that is one of the reasons Offshore Norway has taken this up uh, in the way this has been communicated. For example, through the state apparatus, media. But I'll talk about what is this. So this is 30 gigawatt offshore wind capacity. So you can think of every wind turbine comes with a plate that says this can maximum give you 10 megawatts. And that's the capacity of that wind turbine. That's the maximum power it can give. Uh, uh, the example, for example, in, in the NVE, when they look at this future scenario, they have this reference turbine. This is a big one, 22 megawatt. This hasn't really been built yet. But it's, it's about, I mean, the one pro big problem here for developers is that they no, never know how, when this is development is going to stop. Are they going to be, be bigger and bigger? Or are they going to culminate somewhere, stop somewhere? Maybe they stop at 20, maybe they stop at 25. We don't know yet. So that's one of the main problems we have. We don't know how big they will be, but this is probably something that looks like the future. 22 megawatts, about 308 meters high. That's quite high. That's higher than Eiffel Tower and, and much higher. So to reach these 30 gigawatts of, of, of capacity, we need 1,360 turbines of these. I mean, you multiply 1,360 by 22 megawatts, you get 30 gigawatts. So that's the number approximately to reach this goal that needs to be out there producing power some of the time, sometimes they're down, sometimes they are being shut down for maintenance and so on. They're not producing all the time, but I'll come back to that. So typically offshore wind farms, they produce at least 30 to 40% of their maximum capacity during about 50% of the time. That means they're very rarely shut down unless they're being maintenance or, or there's some failure. And, and there has some been some talk about well, either they produce full power or nothing. That's far from true. Some, most often they're producing 
half of their unlimited power, or half of their uh, capacity power. So how much will this 30 gigawatt produce? How much energy will this uh, likely produce when they are being finished around 34, 2040 to 2050? That's about 20 to 30 years. Well, it will vary a lot between years, depending on how much is demand, how much does the grid demand, how are the cables put out, how much exchange with other countries will be, but likely it will be somewhere in around 100 to 140 terawatt hours per year. Today, Norway uses 150 terawatt hour per year, approximately. And to put a number on that, if you're not familiar, that's 30,000 kilowatt hours per person per year. That's quite a lot. Your house uses typically around 20. So that means there's a lot of energy for the industry. Um, and still, we aim to produce twice that, almost twice that. And, and one reason for this is the fuel. Because fuels need a lot of energy. Um, but how, how much area will this 30 gigawatt then, I mean, we could say cover or populate? How much areas are we talking about? So that's when this 3.5 comes in. So this is, this is an effect per area that the government says to every company that wants to build offshore wind, you cannot go below this. So that says that you have to, when you get an area where you are allowed to build, you get the, you get the right to have this area built uh, in turbines on it at a certain uh, cost or, or whatever the deal involves. But it has to be at least 3.5 megawatt installed <laughs> per kilometer, square kilometer in this area. And, and Norway is not alone in Europe to, to put this demand. For example, in the UK, it has been very often up to the developer to say, um, you can have this area, put as many turbines as you want here, or basically. And, and it's up to the developer to, to fill it with turbines. But in Norway, you say, it has to be this, at least this density of effect per area. Uh, Denmark, for example, is also saying this more or less the same as Norway and, 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 and the rest of Europe uh, now. Uh, so, for example, if, if, if an operator or a builder gets this 10 by 10 kilometer area, it has to, and, and it, it, the developer chooses a 22 megawatt turbine, has to be at least 16 of these turbines in that area. I'm, I'm, I'm very simplifying here on the, on the area, it, usually not the square. It, and they usually don't line up that regularly, as I show here, but it's an example. So it has to at least put 16 turbines in there. Usually they will put more. But there is a discussion, I mean, if you put more, there will be less wind for the turbines that are behind on the wind wake and so on. But I mean, this is, this is the lower uh, requirement from the government. It has to be at least 16 um, turbines or 22 megawatt inside this area. This is a hypothetical example. And, and as the work we've done with offshore Norway shows that this is, this is consistent with what we see today in, in Europe. This is possible. Usually we find large wind parks with much higher density than this. And sometimes you find lower, and that is in places often in countries where the government hasn't said anything about how, to, how many turbines you need in that area. So, so if you take these two numbers, divide them by each other, you say you need an area of about 8,571 square kilometers as the maximum. This is about one third of Viken Fylke, if you're familiar, it's uh, the Viken Kommune, Viken Fylke. It's a large area. Uh, but what it doesn't say is how much area the fisheries will be uh, affected by. I mean, it says, the total area where there will be wind turbines. But there will, I mean, these parks will not usually be squares or, 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 or they can have any shapes. And sometimes there will be corridors between the parks for traffic to pass. It will be perhaps too hard for most of the fishing, commercial fishing operations today. So, so the total area, we don't know. We don't know yet. But we say that in the areas that are populated by wind turbines, would be maximum 8,571 square kilometers. Uh, but it could, it could be lower still. Um, also, you have safety distances. Uh, we heard a lot about uh, fishermen. They don't want to go too close to these parts 
plus the wind directions and might lead to drift into the wind parts and so on. So there are many, many uh, considerations depending on the tool, on the weather, on the fishing gear, on the, on the depth of the currents, everything that can make these 8,500 square kilometers larger where, where, where fisheries are affected, not in a good way, that they are shying away from it. Um, yes, so there are many, many open questions. I mean, remember that this, this uh, license that was dealt this early this year down in Sørlige Nordsjø, that process started back in 2010, approximately, <laughs> 12, of, of, of evaluating. Now, 14, 12, 14 years later, they are given the rights of a producer to actually start working on plans to build, and maybe they're finished around 20, before 2030. So it's about 20 years. It takes a long time, and, and, and that has been the experience in Norway on many of these renewable projects. It's a long time between decisions are made and it's actually built. But with the government's uh, goals now, put to 2040, that's 16 years. It's not long. So, so we are in a totally different regime here, and the demands of us that we take this seriously, that all stakeholders are heard. And, and, and that is a big process now going on that you are probably familiar with, that earlier last year, they identified 20 of these areas where it could be possible to build these 30 gigawatts. Um, so now they have this con uh, SKU, strategic consequential uh, yeah, uh, yeah, evaluation. So, so the, the NVA and, the, and all departments are now evaluating all these areas, which shall be opened, what part of these wide areas shall be opened. I'm not saying which part shall be built wind, but which part shall be opened for consideration of being built wind. It's now ongoing today as we speak, and they're collecting all the stakeholders' uh, interests in all these areas. Uh, everything will be made public. I've been part of one of two of these uh, groups, and, and there'll be lots more uh, information uh, in the next half year or a year or so when these, these reports come out, including all the maps will probably be made public. Uh, so, I mean, if you just play a little bit around, if you, if you say we have 30 wind parks of one gigawatt, this wind park down in the south that has been approved now is about one gigawatt. They, I, I plot them in here as, as, as small green squares. I just put them out in these areas. This is what 30 gigawatts could look like. <laughs> I mean, if you just spread them out. Of course, these this decisions on where they will end up in, in 16 years, we don't know. We don't know. But that, there's a lot of decisions, or lots of dependencies here. I mean, for example, where is power needed? We talk a lot about electrification of everything. Oil and gas needs a lot of power. The boats, the fuels. We need to get away from the bunkers. We need to, yeah, I mean, you imagine. Yeah, we are about to double our, our electricity production, according to the government's goals. Uh, so, this is the next year or so, or half a year, there will be lots of information about which of these white areas will be relevant. And fisheries is one important voice here. Where is, where is it absolutely really hard to, to coexist with, with, with fisheries and wind here? Where, where is it? lots of fishing activity, or lots of spawning, lots of spawning grounds, uh, migration routes, and so on? All of this will be put into the evalu evaluation going on now areas that will be, not, I'm not saying excluded, because there are 20 stakeholders here, in this, at least 20 stakeholders. I mean, uh, tourism, marine traffic, uh, military, oil and gas, tourism, you name it, there are many. And all of these has been put on top of each other before a decision has been made, uh, will be made on what, which of these areas will be considered, which part of these areas will be considered, that will be enough to bring us to 30 gigawatts in 20. I'm not saying they will be built in 2040, but at least the decision to start building them will be made in 2040, uh, before 2040. So that's the... That's what I will say. I say I have 20 seconds left here. Uh, this report that we wrote uh, is available in this link. Uh, I didn't write the link, but uh, I guess maybe these slides will be shared so you can click on it.
Um, yes, that's uh, my talk. So.